Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain basics and rules of root locus. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of root locus. See root locus explains systems dynamic characteristics and that we plot on S plane. With the use of systems dynamic characteristics, we can identify stability region and systems response. So root locus that we plot it on S plane and with the use of plot we can identify stability region. Root locus explains systems dynamic characteristics. We plot root locus on S plane. Here we plot roots of the system. Roots means poles and zeros. Here with the use of root locus we identify systems response and stability region on S plane. Let me explain how. Here we have S plane. In S plane on the vertical axis we have imaginary value and on horizontal axis we have real value. As if you have roots which is there in this region means left half region then system is stable. And as if we have roots in right half plane then system is unstable. Here if you observe roots then on right half plane roots are having positive real values and on left half plane roots are having negative real value. So based on region we can identify stability. As if roots are there on imaginary axis then system will be marginally stable. Here we will be plotting systems dynamic characteristics with the use of root locus that we plot it on S plane right and to plot root locus you need to understand some standard rules. So now I will explain rules of root locus. See root locus plot that we need to plot based on poles and zeros of the system. Here you will be drawing lines which will be emerging from the poles right. So here root locus plot that is based on poles and zeros where line is getting emerged from the poles and that is getting enclosed to zeros or asymptotes. So always remember this we will be plotting lines that will be root locus where lines will be emerging from the poles and that is getting enclosed to zero or asymptote right. One more thing that you need to understand see root locus plot that must be symmetric with respect to real axis. So root locus plot that should be symmetric with respect to real axis means plot will be similar on upper region and lower region with respect to real axis right. Here there are few standard steps that I will be explaining but all the steps are not compulsory based on requirements we need to calculate steps. I will explain you all these steps and in future coming videos I will be solving 11 examples. Based on those examples you can understand how to follow steps but you need to understand how steps are there. See in first step we need to identify roots. Roots means poles and zeros of the system. So you will be given with transfer function of the system and based on transfer function you can identify roots means you can identify poles and zeros. Here you can identify location of poles and zeros as well as number of poles and zeros. Here total number of loci, loci means total number of lines that will be maximum of poles and zeros. Let us say you have four poles and two zeros. So here maximum of poles and zero that will be four means we will be having in total four lines. As I have said line will emerge from the poles right and it is getting enclosed to the zeros. So here in total lines will be maximum of poles and zeros. If you have four poles then there will be four lines that is getting emerges from the four poles and if you have two zeros then two lines that will go inside zeros but another two lines that should go inside asymptotes. So second step that is based on calculation of number of asymptotes that is 
total number of poles minus total number of zeros right so number of asymptotes that is total number of poles minus total number of zeros once you identify asymptotes then you need to identify angle of asymptotes right see angle of asymptotes that is based on 2n plus 1 divided by p minus z into 180 if you have two asymptotes then here value of n that will be 0 and 1 so if you place 0 then you will be getting one angle and if you place 1 then you will be getting second angle so based on value of n you can identify angle of asymptotes right now in fourth step we need to identify centroid of asymptotes centroid of asymptotes that will be sigma c and that is summation of real parts of poles minus summation of real parts of zeros divided by pole minus zeros right this equation that you will have to use to identify centroid of asymptotes so first of all we will be identifying location of poles and zeros right and then we will be plotting it on s plane after that we will identify number of asymptotes angle of asymptotes and centroid of asymptotes after that we need to initiate our plot in that plot always remember line will emerge from the poles and it will get enclosed to the zeros or asymptotes right and root locus will be symmetric with respect to real axis now we need to see step number five in that we need to identify breakaway points and that we need to calculate only if it is required right that even I'll explain in example, like in which situation it is required. Right now consider if it is required, then first of all, we need to identify characteristic equation that is 1 plus GSHS equals to 0. After that, based on this equation, we need to identify value of constant K that will be somewhat polynomial. And then we need to differentiate K with respect to S and that is equals to 0. And we can identify roots of S that will be breakaway points right and always remember these steps are not compulsory that we need to compute based on requirements now in next step we need to identify angle of departure angle of departure means as if you have one pole then at what angle line will emerge that we can identify that is angle of departure that we can calculate based on this equation that is 180 degree minus summation of angle of poles minus summation of angle of zeros right using this equation we can identify angle of departure this step that is essential in case of you have roots means you have poles or zeros with imaginary values right and last step is based on intersection to imaginary axis so that is also not compulsory step but that we need to calculate as if we observe there is an intersection of roots with imaginary axis to identify xz value first of all we need to calculate characteristic equation that is 1 plus gshs equals to 0 then we need to make routh matrix and with that routh matrix we need to identify the constant value k for marginal stable system to identify marginal stable system we need to check first column of the routh matrix and based on value of k we need to place value of k in auxiliary equation auxiliary equation will be second order equation in routh matrix so all these steps that you can understand based on examples right and all these steps are not compulsory but in which situation we need to apply those steps that you can understand only based on examples so in next coming videos i will be solving in total 11 examples and all those examples are comprehensive examples based on that you can easily understand root locus analysis i hope now you are having fair enough idea about how many steps are there with root locus and what are the basics which is there with root locus still if any confusion is there just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video